Good morning. Welcome to Jesus in the Rock Church. We've been doing our annual Bible study on the chap- in the book of Acts in chapter 24. We just want to praise you and thank you for joining us for this beautiful, sunny day here to go and read God's Word. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we just praise you and thank you for this Bible study, Lord. Help us get out of everything you need for us to receive from you, from your living word, Lord God. Hallelujah. Live and active, moving powerfully in our lives. Help us uh, understand and give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Lord God, of your word, Lord God. And help us to understand your ways, Lord God. And let us just put away our thoughts and our ideas to receive from the Holy Spirit what he wants to teach us. In Jesus' name. So, in chapter 24, verse 1, And after five days, Ananias, the high priest, descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullius, who informed the governor against Paul. Okay? So an orator is speaker. Verse 2, And when he was called forth, Tertullius began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. Right? He's kissing up to him. All right? He's a big, uh, he's a big blowhard, typical of orators, typical of speakers, just schmoozing the ones that are in power, figuring that if I, you know, just constantly give them praises that, you know, I'll find favor with them. Verse 3, And we accept it always, and in all places most noble, Felix, with all thankfulness. See, not thankfulness, not to God and the blessings, the blessings of God, the blessings of God's right hand, but thankfulness toward a man, not toward God. Verse 4, Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. <clears throat> Verse 5. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He's picking on Paul who also has gone about to profane the temple, whom we took, and would have judged according to our law. Verse 7, But the chief captain, Lysias, came upon us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands. So here the orator, Tertullius, is putting the blame on the captain for saving Paul. Okay, came with great violence and took him away out of our hands. Verse 8, And commanding his accusers to come unto thee, by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things, whereof we accuse him. And the Jews also ascended, saying that these things were so. Verse 10, Then Paul, after that, the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. Verse 11, Because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues, nor in the city. Verse 13. Neither can they prove these things where they now accuse me. Verse 14. But this I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers. Hallelujah. 
believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Okay? So he's believing the word of God rather than teaching of man or the, the priests. Okay? So I'm believing this, and because I believe everything the prophets have said, everything that's written in the law, this is why I'm being persecuted. Verse 15. And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow. So, the ones that are accusing me, I have the hope toward God. And the ones that are accusing me, they also allow. That there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Verse 16. And here do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and man. You see, verse 17, Now after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. Okay? So this is the tithe. Okay? This is, he's bringing the tithe to his nation and to bring offerings. So he's not trying to stir them up. He's trying to bless them. Verse 18, Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult. Okay, so this is where we talked about. They tried to get Paul under the law, and they ended up beating him up anyways. And he's basically saying, they found me purified in the temple, not raising up people, not just riot, raising up rioters, but I, I was purified. Okay? Neither with multitude nor with tumult. Okay, so let's pause here for a minute. Let's go back to Acts chapter 21 and read 20 verses 23 and 24. Okay, so 21, 23. Oops, that's two parts. Okay, Acts 21 verses 23 and 24. Do therefore this that we say, we say, man, to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them, take them, uh, them take, and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but thou mayest also walk it orderly, and keepest the law. This is what he did. Okay? So let's go back to Acts 24, verses 18. See, he says, Whereupon the Jews from Asia found me purified in temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult. So Paul telling the absolute truth. Verse 19, Who ought to have been here before thee, and object if they had ought against me. Verse 20, Or else let these same here say, if they have found any evil doing in me, while I stood before the council, except it be for this one voice that I cried, Standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. So he says, this is the real reason why I'm called into question and these accusations are being brought against me. Verse 22, And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, Where Lysus, the cap chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. Verse 23, And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul, and to let him have liberty, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintances to minister or to come unto him. So he's not going to lock him away for this frivolous accusation. He's like, let Paul have liberty. Let us all his friends minister to him, bring him food, bring him clothing, whatever he needs, let his friends attend to him. Verse 24, And after certain days when Felix came with his wife, Jerusalem, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He was getting very uncomfortable, so he sent him away. Verse 26, he hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, 
that he might loose him, wherefore he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. You see, Paul was not poor. He was looking to take uh, a bribe from Paul to release him out of prison, but Paul did not bribe him. All right, and you can also read, you know, take no bribes, Exodus 23, verse 8. Verse 27, and after two years, uh, Porcius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. So Paul was bound for that for two years. All right. Now, let me grab my other book, and we're going to read what Exodus 23, verse 8 says. Exodus 23, 8. 23, verse 8. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise, and perverteth the words of the righteous. And this is why Paul would not bribe Felix to grab his freedom. This ends our Bible study for the day. Please, if you liked what you heard, hit, click like and share down below. Like if you're full, share if you want to share with the hungry. So we just bless you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Until next time, brothers and sisters, God bless you.